Today we're going to talk about a new accessory that I have added to our Model Y. It's something that I've tried in the past with different versions of this same type of thing and I've always come back to the same conclusion. I just can't get comfortable. I am talking about a screen on the front of the Model Y. Now putting a screen here like a heads-up display is pretty nice and if you drive a Model X or Model S you have all that information in front of you but in the Model Y and 3 of course we only have the main screen and of course I guess the Cybertruck as well. Now this works just fine but there are some nice features that having this screen adds plus it's kind of nice to have all that right in front of you. So for those of you making the switch that are a little less comfortable even though I promise you you'll get used to just having one screen this might be actually a pretty good solution. So today I'm gonna to talk about this particular unit and why this one is better than the rest. Okay, so like I've said, I have tried a number of these things in the past and the biggest issue I have is the amount of airflow that it blocks is just too much. Now, this obviously does block some of that airflow. It would be impossible not to given its location, but what it does different is the way that it mounts is it allows air to still get around this thing and it's a little bit smaller profile but still a large screen so it actually works out all right so there are some tips and tricks on how to get that airflow just right and i'll show you that here in this video but i want to talk about why this unit kind of stands out from the rest it actually gets updates over time and by the time I installed this, there was already a new update and it turns out there's another update coming very soon that is going to allow this thing to automatically take care of that nag alert that you get where it asks you to put your hands on the wheel. That apparently is coming in an update. At this time, it does not work on my unit, so that update's not just out yet, but that is a really cool feature. So if you have basic autopilot, when you put it in autopilot, as soon as that nag pops up, the screen does something in the back end to turn that nag off. So it takes care of all that for you, meaning you can be kind of hands-free with this particular unit set up. Now it has a number of different screens that you can choose from. The graphics are really good actually, and the functions of the vehicle are all displayed there. So if you pop the hood, you pop the trunk, you open the doors, it's all kind of displayed there. You can also choose the color of car. You get information like your battery charge, remaining miles of charge, temperature outside, time, what gear you're in, miles, whether you're in autopilot or not. Also, one of the cool things that it adds is it integrates a blind spot monitor, which is not native in my Model Y. We have a 2021 Model Y that I'm sitting in right now, and what this does is it uses the information that the vehicle knows it just gives that to you in a way that you can see it. So if somebody's in your blind spot, you'll actually see a little animation of a vehicle on which side it is. And when you turn your turn signal on, it'll actually turn red in that corner, giving you another alert that there's somebody right there. That's actually kind of a nice feature to add. So now you have blind spot monitor right there in front of you. Of course, this unit does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as do most of these units at this point. So the nice thing about that is running some of those apps that you might prefer to have, like maybe the maps on your phone you prefer, or using Waze, or even just streaming your audio from your phone. It all works right here. Now the graphics on this are pretty nice because it gives you the option to go dark mode, light mode, or auto. So it'll automatically switch between light mode and dark mode based on the screen in your car, which is the simple way to do this. That's what I leave mine on. And then also we have the ability to change some of the display options. So whether you want something more simple, you want something that's got more information, something more sporty, whatever. There's a number of different profiles you can select from to get the look that you're looking for on the screen. Now for airflow, this is really where the biggest problem comes. And with a lot of these units, because of where they're located, it's literally blocking the whole airflow. Now this one, it does sit forward a bit and it also only blocks a couple of the vent holes right in the middle. But if you set your airflow just right, you'll actually be able to still get pretty good airflow. And there's two pieces to this. Number one, whether you're driving alone or if there's somebody in the passenger seat. So let me show you a couple of ways to do this to get the best airflow with this unit. All right, so with the airflow, how I have it set right now with no passenger here is if you actually turn on your passenger vent, 
close it, move it all over to you. That adds nice air from over here. And actually, whether somebody's there and using the air or not, this is the way to have the air set up. So as you can see, I'm all the way down and kind of towards the edges here. And what this is doing is allowing air to come just through here. And all of the air over here is hitting me with no issue. I've also got some air coming from underneath the screen, which is what's nice about how this thing mounts is it sits up a little bit higher. So some of that air is coming through and actually hitting me. So this allows me to keep it on auto and not have to mess with it. However, if you really want, you can obviously turn auto off and you can crank the air up however much you want. You will definitely feel this air as it's blowing. So Depending on how you want to do it, I just keep mine on auto. That's how I prefer it anyways. That's how it works for me when somebody's over here and they've got their air, whatever. Just have yours set up just like this. And then when somebody's not over there, make sure this is turned on because this will help with getting the air in the vehicle anyways. And while it's there, just have one of those sides pointed towards your area. So here's something cool that was part of an upgrade that happened while I installed this. With the new update, you can actually uh, press to open three of the four doors, so not yours, but the other three doors. So if you are a rideshare operator or whatever, you can actually just press that button and pop the door open for your passenger so they're not fumbling with it. Also, we have battery preconditioning right here, which is pretty cool. When you press that, you can definitely hear the fans kicking on on the vehicle as it preheats, and then you can press it again, turn it off, and then this will allow you to move the passenger seat forward a bit or back a bit just to give your rear passenger some more space. So this is clearly set up really nicely for rideshare operators. And we have some quick prompts over here where we can quickly jump to the front camera and it's right there and more about the front camera here in a moment. But also we can just turn this to time if we want to see the time while we're waiting and we can turn the AP off, I have off, but if you turn that on, that's for the um, display of the rainbow. All right, so let's go back to this front camera real quick. So this is an additional $45. I'm showing you what it looks like right now at a super wide angle, but it's not the best quality. It's $45, so not crazy, but I mean, it's nice to see what's up there, but it does nothing really useful as far as determining really distance to things. It's very, very wide angle and a bit too much so. So the quality is not the greatest. I mean, you can see how squished this vehicle is. So really they've stretched this thing out, squashed it down. Um, and really with an update, I think they can close this in a bit and make this a little bit less uh, distorted and it'll be a better image. But not worth it uh, for that camera. That camera is not that great in my opinion. So overall, here are my thoughts. I've had this thing on for about a month and I actually like it. I like having this information in front of me and I've actually recommended some changes that they can make to add additional things that we might want to see on this display that should already be able to be captured from the data in the vehicle. Things like efficiency data, stuff like that would be really nice to see on here. And I think that that's something that's going to be coming with a future update as well. So with more things like that being available to display on the screen, I think that this becomes more useful over time. Having the tire pressure displayed, that's really the only thing here on the right hand side no matter which screen you're on. Otherwise, it's just the menu options of going to CarPlay or settings or whatever. Closer to that $300 is where you're gonna land. And I think that's a reasonable price for this. The way that it installs is super easy. That's the craziest part about this. It seems like something that would be very difficult or complicated to install, but I assure you, this is really easy to install and it looks nice. It looks like it's a part of the vehicle. It doesn't really scream. It doesn't stand out like crazy. It looks like it's integrated in the vehicle as it was from the factory. So I think it's a really nice unit. If you're looking for a unit, you should definitely consider this one for sure. And I don't think that you'll be dissatisfied. Having the airflow is always going to be an issue. This one is the least airflow restricted unit that I have tested and I think I've tested maybe four or five of them at this point and I've really only posted one because 
every time the airflow is just gone it's just not available but here finally i can actually feel so i think that that makes this one worthy of showing you today so there you have it in my opinion i think this is the best display screen the heads-up display that's on the market today and if it's something that you're looking for this is definitely want the one to get having some active updates happen while i was installing was very encouraging not something i'm used to seeing so they are doing some active updates to this, giving more functionality, and in addition, being able to have it take care of the nag that we get by putting your hands on the steering wheel in a future update is really cool. They sent me a video, you've seen it here, I've displayed it on the screen. I can't wait for that one to come because that is actually a really cool feature to have in your vehicle if you only have basic autopilot. So that's it for today. I thank you for joining us and I can't wait to catch you on the next one.